the level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. Well, I was huh. terrified out there. Were you really? Yeah. Yeah. You just got an MJ? Yeah. Yo, and I watched this all in real time. These are the times Michael Jordan humiliated his opponents. The stuff that I saw when I was in college on TV is just like really real. And what Jordan did to Alonzo Mourning should get him locked up for attempted murder. What? He gets it to Jordan. Michael challenges him. Oh, man. And look at me. Look at this. Tug out over Alonzo. Yo, Martin. and I'm a. Listen, I'm from Charlotte. Like in my later years, like about ninety, right after high school, I moved to Charlotte, and uh, I moved up here when it was Alonzo Mourning, Larry Johnson, Muggsy Bogues, and I seen it. I was a Michael Jordan fan, which in turn became a, a Bulls fan, similar to the way people are Cleveland fans because you're LeBron fans, you know, whatever. You pick a. Uh, we grew up in that era. We were Jordan fans, right? Um, I also liked a lot of other uh, players. Kobe Bryant, um, Sean Kemp was an underrated favorite of mine Anthony Mason from the Knicks Alonzo Mourning like I liked a lot of different players but Jordan was just one of my favorites who just my favorite top you know back when he was playing but dang that's crazy for murder though I thought he was going to talk shit to him or something but yeah that was a badass dunk I've seen that too Damn. this man Jordan is a psychopath I mean all right let's not exaggerate you guys. a kid just to prove that he was the goat yeah, this is OJ Mayo, and in 2006, he was the number one ranked high school player in all of America. Yeah, I was so, killing it. being the talented kid he was, OJ was personally invited to Michael Jordan's flight school, a basketball camp where kids can learn straight from the GOAT. Wow. Yo, it's the Michael Jordan flight school. And learn yo, how to listen, listen, we came up with this commercial. Like, I, I, we, we, I remember this commercial on my TV. You know, this is a uh, 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 Spike Lee, and he was what, what was this? What was his uh, character name? Oh, man. Really great sneakers. I forgot and his guy. Would forgot his name. That. This was like a dream come true for OJ. So we packed up his bags and flew out to Cali, ready to learn from the greatest. But little wow. did OJ know, this camp would turn into his worst nightmare. You know, I'm playing in my uh, my camp against OJ Mayo. He was a top high school kid coming out in front of my camp. He starts his thing about, you can't guard me, you can't do this. Oh you know, my I got God, my why would you, here, so come on, come on. I can't on. really go where I want to go because of my camp. And then uh, he said, okay, now let me handle my business. And he looked me in my face and said, I'm like, what you mean? So he said, I need all the campers, everybody to leave. Oh this no. From this point on, it's a Come on, this is, this is some over, you guys are so competitive. You just don't even, but you don't say that to like, you can't guard me. I, I get, I frequently hear a lot of people that play basketball or other sports. Like it's, it's almost common to be egotistical and cocky and arrogant and, and you know, like let your game speak. Like you don't gotta, I think they think they, people think talking shit is part of the game and it may be, but let your game speak. Like you, you, you're a high school kid talking to michael jordan i get it i get it mgk went at eminem you know what i mean but but i mean maybe sometimes you just shouldn't let me let me not speak let's see i want to see the rest of this lesson and from that point on it was a lesson he didn't want a game i posted him up i did everything hit the famous fadeaway on me oh yeah then, uh, oh yeah and he said hey you know let me tell you something you may be the best high school player right but i'm the best player in the world Jordan, the, the kid can't even drive yeah, What the bro. hell? <laughs> well, look, OJ got off easy compared to most NBA players. Because Michael Jordan has been... What's it like to say I'm the best in the world? Nobody can say they're the best on their block. Now, I mean, not many... You know what I mean? You can say you're the best on your block, the best in your area. Then you get to high school and you start like categorizing you're the best in your, in your district, in your state, in the nation, in the southeast. But... For you to just be so great that you can just say, I'm the greatest, I'm the best in the world at the time that you're the best, it's just got to be some kind of like, some kind of arrogance at the same time, but like, such a, must be a great feeling. Uh -huh. Humiliating the same NBA player for 40 years straight, and it all started back in college. Wow. It was March 29th, 1982, Michael Jordan versus Patrick Ewing. For the NCAA championship, and with MJ down one, with just 17. Hey, you know what's crazy is my family were big Knicks fans, so when I became a Jordan Bulls fan, uh, it was lots of rivalry in our household. I respected the Knicks; they were a dope team. I mean, Ewing, Starks, Mason. Uh, there was uh, tons of players on that team that I respected, but 
I liked Michael Jordan, so it was always a fight in our house. It was dope. Seconds left. He gets the ball, and makes history. Not over Ewing. Jordan's title winning shot not only sent Ewing home, but it also marked the beginning of a lifetime of humiliation. Because once they both made it to the NBA, Jordan took every chance he could get to make Patrick Ewing his big oh, monster blocks, screaming on. in his face. Right, that's another thing that Jordan was so good at. Let me tell you, hold on a second. Let me get to my life. Thanks for watching, you guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, you know, I appreciate you hanging out with me. This is Michael Jordan embarrassing uh, people in the best way that he does. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Let's get back to it. Yeah, I don't like ads. Screw the ads. Five and a top box screaming in his face. Five straight playoff knockouts. Five. And to top it all off, in 1991, Jordan hit Ewing with one of the most embarrassing poster dunks in NBA history. All right, is this the one I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look, look. Oh! And they posted that shit. So it's Trip Starks up. Look at Starks. But it's all good, though. Because in 2002, Show the poster. Show the poster. Ewing retired from the NBA and finally escaped Jordan's wrath. That poster was... Or, or did he? At least that's what he thought. Yeah. He's been talking trash from the first day that I met him, and he still continued to talk trash, telling me that I, that I have never beaten him when he counts. I mean, you guys met as high school recruits. Right. That's a long time. That's decades and decades of trash talk, Patrick. Oh, yes, and it, it still hasn't stopped. <laughs> Even today, if I, if I call him right now, he'll, he'll still be talking trash to me. Patrick Ewing didn't that wasn't my do thing. anything to Jordan, and he still got humiliated. But uh, I can't say the same. Yeah, talking shit has never really been my thing. I always was pretty sensitive to it, which is probably, you know, uh, why talking shit is actually a, a, a um, an efficient, an effective thing. Because when you're getting in somebody's head, they get off their game. But it was never my thing. I just never liked talking shit to people. I would try to, my game would speak, you know, for itself. And Jordan's game spoke for itself too. And this is what they do on the court. They trash talk. I'm just saying it was never really my thing. And, you know, it's for Reggie it's Miller. Too competitive as a me. rookie, he made the biggest mistake of his life. Reggie disrespecting Miller. Michael Jordan. See, in 1987, during Reggie's first year in the NBA, he played Jordan's Bulls in a preseason matchup. And early in the game, Reggie went off, scoring 10 points over Jordan. He, he and did. He went off up so bad plenty that of times. by the end of the half, Jordan only had four points. Four. So, a little Reggie was feeling himself, thinking he was the GOAT and thought it'd be a good idea to shit talk Michael <laughs> Jordan. My rookie year. Oh, um, you think we it's a good idea. Chicago Bulls, and right. this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan? The guy everyone's talking about, who's supposed to be able to walk on oh, water. Oh, God. You're, you're killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. Oh, <laughs> ego. Talking to him. Ego. Like, yeah, you're right, Michael. Who do you think you are? <laughs> the great Michael Jordan. That's right. There's a new kid on town, right? Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, oh, yeah? I have 10, and he has four points. Not right? a good up. Not like, a okay. good up. Ten, the in the that's all half, you got? He ended up with 44. <laughs> and I ended up with 12. 12. <laughs> I was right. And he's walking off. He's like, be sure and be careful. You never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Wow. Jesus. You didn't even so score sorry. two more Did points. Did you ever do it again? Never to Michael Jordan. <laughs> never to Michael. You know, mm. I think Reggie learned a valuable lesson. This man, Jordan, is downright petty. Like one time, he came out of retirement just to humiliate this NBA player. Ooh. Yeah. Back in 1999, most players were thanking God they didn't have to face Jordan anymore. But there was one man who felt different. Bulls guard, Corey Benjamin. Yo, who the fuck is this? All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Looks like there's another ad. That's okay. No problem. There we go. Let's get back to it. Was. So, yeah, sorry about ignored that. it and went back to... I was looking forward to beating him one-on-one. -on -one. But luckily, Jordan didn't even know what a Corey Benjamin was. So he ignored it and went back to enjoying his tequila and cigars. But over the next few months, Corey started trashing Mike's name, telling his teammates that Jordan was overrated, washed up, 
He couldn't beat him one on one. Oh. This Corey Benjamin dude well, was just asking to die. He was on Eagles the Bulls. Practice. He dug his own grave. I don't remember when this dude. He stole a teammate's cell phone, called up Jordan, and said this. Hey, you know, I say a little bit too much. What you say? What you say? What you say? I, I can get you. And he said, what? I said, yeah, I want that. He said, all right, I'll be at your practice Monday morning. I'm like, yeah, right. Man, we flew back to Chicago. We broke practice. Bulls on three. Bulls. Guess who walked in the door? MJ oh, walked in the door, Chris. <laughs> Ooh. I then it took a dump on myself. Yeah. I bet, bro. What did you, you know, expect? Up. What did it you was expect? This practice that Corey Benjamin was buried alive. Got whooped. <laughs> Simple. And it's this is his game. This is like his thirty percent game, right? You know he ain't going at it. He's not giving a hundred percent. Give me that ball back. Kidding up with that all day, all day. Look, he's still in his warm-ups. He's still in his warm-up pants. <laughs> this man is messed up in the head. He has no limit. I mean, he'll even humiliate the people he loves most. See, in the 90s, there was one player that Jordan did everything with, Charles Barkley. Yeah, the two were best friends. But in 1993, stop from talking everything shit. changed. Because when they met in the NBA Finals, I watched did all this. I watched dirty. all this firsthand. Right before game four, he invited Charles Barkley to a round of golf where he gifted him $20,000 diamond earrings. Oh my and God. that sounds nice, but it was all a part of Jordan's secret plan to butter Charles up and f him. Cause oh Jordan my God. later told his assistant coach his true motive, saying, Charles won't get in my way the rest of the series. What's 20,000 to me? He thinks we're great friends. I hate that fat f Damn, that's evil. But hey, it worked, because the? the very next game, Jordan humiliated Barkley in front of the whole world. Come on, no, he said get out of the way. BJ, BJ Armstrong's like, hey, hey, chill out. Bro, did he really do that right before the finals? That's crazy, that's like paying somebody off. What the hell? I didn't know that. That Michael's night, ruthless. Jordan grabbed the dub by dropping 55 points. And just a few days later, he sent Barkley home and won his third ring. Jordan, how are you going to do your friend <laughs> like, like that, dog? You, bro. Damn, that's, that's ruthless. But if we're talking ruthless, you got to talk about what Jordan did to the Kembe Mutumba. Because MJ hit him no, no, with no, the most no. embarrassing poster dunk no, no, of his no, NBA no, career. No. See, in the 90s, I Jordan liked... was dominating yeah. the league, oh, dunking yeah. on everyone. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, everyone except one player. Seven foot two monster, Dikembe Mutumba. And it's knocked away by Mutumbo. Running hook, blocked by Mutumbo. Morning, blocked. I buy the same All right, you let do, me get to the. I, get a much Ooh, I, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Like, share, comment, subscribe. This is Jordan's humiliating, Jordan humiliating uh, other people moments humiliation. Thanks for watching. <laughs> These are longer videos, so I might just cut them up. how hard There's Rodman. There's Rodman. This is this was a good team too. <laughs> the um. The Bulls had three good teams. If they weren't broken up, I swear to God, they would have kept going. I think everybody believes that. Uh, they had three dope teams. It started out with, um, you know, uh, Jordan, Pippen, uh, Paxson, Grant, Cartwright. Then it moved into B.J. Armstrong and, and them. And then there was Kukoc and Rodman, and th th that was a good team too. Like uh, And Bill... Bill, I forgot what his Hi. name was. He couldn't land this a single right dunk on Mutombo's gigantic ass. None so of them. in 1997, Dikembe rubbed it in. None of Come on, man. Dikembe. Before you haven't got me yet. Mike. Dikembe. Don't even try it. You want me to go call Scotty? 
You have to call Scotty. I haven't got you recently. Yeah, I agree with no, that. No, you haven't got me in the six years. One, two, three, just go ahead and say it. Oh. Oh. No. Never. He said, I'll get you one day. No. Get one day. <laughs> he never dunked on you. He never Face put you on the highlight. No. Uh, no. He said, I would love to hear you in my poster, but it's not happening. It's not going to happen. Lying. <laughs> he ain't lying. It's never going to happen. Oh, man. Yeah, Dikembe was talking shit, and he really thought man. Jordan would man. never dunk on him. No, but no, no. A couple of months later, when the two squared off in the playoffs, Jordan. When Jordan's at his high. Yeah. He's like, get out of the way. Give me this. Oh! That wasn't really a dunk on Dikembe. That wasn't on Dikembe. He kind of slid past somebody else. Dikembe was over here. This dude, whoever this was. Oh, I mean. He got a poster out of it. I think he got a poster out of it. He never dunked on you. Oh, yeah. He never put you on the highlight. <laughs> no, no. Ooh, there it is. Not only did Jordan hit Dikembe with the most humiliating poster dunk of his career, yeah. but he also eliminated him from the playoffs in the same game. Embarrassing. But hey, it's still not as bad as what happened to Isaiah Thomas, because Jordan did him the dirtiest, and it ruined the man's entire legacy. See, in the late 80s, Jordan hated Isaiah Thomas because his Pistons knocked him out of the playoffs three seasons in a John row Sally. and clowned his ass with plays like this. 10-25 to go opening quarter. Uh-oh, it's Despite all the L's, Jordan made sure to shake Isaiah's hand after every single loss. Yeah. Now, that's respect. But in 1991, shit hit the fan. Because during their fourth straight playoff matchup, Jordan's Bulls were just eight seconds away from finally eliminating the Pistons when Isaiah Thomas did the unthinkable, walked off the court, left MJ hanging. What? Two years in a row, we shook their hands when they beat us. There was a certain respect to the game that we paid to them. That's when Rodman was playing with them. No matter how much it hurts. Yeah. And believe me, it fucking hurt. There's no way you can convince me he wasn't an asshole. You could see it in Jordan's eyes. He was furious. Oh, and from this wow. point forward, Jordan knew that he wanted cold I did not blood know revenge. That. I didn't so know that. So over the next few months, Jordan started scheming until he came up with a devious plan. Get Isaiah banned from the most legendary squad ever, the 1992 Olympic Dream Team. See, Jordan what? being the best player of all time, knew that Team USA would do anything for him. So during a recruiting call with the Olympic Committee, Jordan agreed to play, but with just one nah. little condition. No way. And they called me to ask me to play. Rob phone call. I love play. Shut the fuck up. He did that? Yeah. That was leaked audio, proving Jordan got Isaiah banned from the Dream Team, costing How? him a gold medal and a place in basketball history, all over a handshake. And Isaiah still regrets it to this day. Looking back on it, shit, we had been bigger. Yeah. This man. Wait, what? Who lost? He lost the gold medal? Yeah. That was leaked audio, proving Jordan got Isaiah banned from the Dream Team, costing him a gold medal and a place in basketball history, all over a handshake. Costing Isaiah a gold medal, not Michael Jordan. They won. How was that legal? I guess he was valuable. He said, I'm just not going to play if you have Isaiah Thomas play. Wow. That's grimy, dude. They, as the, like my favorite, one of my... As my favorite player, uh, basketball-wise, that's grimy, dude. I don't like that. That's using your power for like for evil. Isaiah Thomas rightfully earned his place on the Dream Team. That's fucked up. Yo, I think of Jordan differently now. I complete. I didn't even realize that. Sean Kemp was on that team. I love Sean Kemp. How Isaiah Thomas not on that team? And Isaiah still regrets it. How are you gonna to regret it? Day. I mean, all right, being a a, a a poor sport and not shaking the man's hand, right? But you're you're taking 
You're taking inventory of how many times this dude shakes your hand, and then at the end of it all, because he don't shake your hand, you're going to call up and use your power and get him banned? Wow. I think different of Jordan right now. Looking back on it, should we had been bigger? You shouldn't have lost yeah. your spot. This man, you Jordan, has spot. humiliated everyone. You but shouldn't. there's but only Kobe? one NBA player yeah. that's ever made him regret it. Kobe Bryant. This See, and it, Kobe hardly ever gets brought up in the conversation unless it's like, yo, what are you guys doing? Forgetting about Kobe. Like, it's always LeBron and MJ, right? Be like, what about Kobe? What about, um, uh, who else can you compare to, to LeBron anyway? I wouldn't say who else can you compare to Jordan, but who can you compare to LeBron? Because everybody says that, uh, you know, LeBron's the greatest, and they'd be like, yeah, but what about Kobe? And what are some other, uh, Con, uh, names that get brought up in the conversation we talk about the greatest of all time he, during Jordan's final season in the NBA he led the Wizards to a one point win over Kobe's Lakers yeah, but I remember. instead of just taking the dub and moving on Jordan wanted to rub it in Kobe's face I remember when he came back and, and coached and played for the Wizards like as if he was going to provide some well, it, what he was trying to do I think was provide some sort of example and, and lead his team um, I don't know what that was all about, why he purchased the Wizards or, or what made him do all that. But One last time. So after the game, they he did walked play. up to Kobe, I remember. looked him dead in the eyes and said, you can put my shoes on all you want, but you're never going to fill them. Yeah. What a Kobe shit got talker. humiliated by his idol. And all he could <sighs> think about was getting back at Jordan. So Kobe locked himself in the gym, stopped talking to his own teammates, and did nothing but practice until March of 2003, when, during their final matchup ever, Kobe Bryant... I mean, he's lucky he got a chance to play against him because he came out of retirement. This was his second time out of retirement uh, uh, to play for the Wizards. He would have never got that opportunity. I don't know, did, did him and Kobe play prior to that when he was on the Bulls? I don't think so. Put Michael Jordan <laughs> in his place. Topcast Sportsnet tonight. Kobe's first jumper, that's good. Long jumper, three. Oh, he's long. He is unbelievable. He's the count by one. Here's his jumper, and that's the first lead Man. of the night for Los Angeles. Unbelievable. Another three for Kobe. Kobe guarded by Lou. Kobe's long jumper. Long. Long. He is I had one of the first pairs of a Kobe uh, Adidas with the, the the face on the bottom, the the real weird looking shoe. I had those in the uh, when in the Laker colors. It was that night, Kobe dropped 42 points in the first half alone. By the end of the night, he scored 55 on Jordan, marking this game I as bet the Jordan's passing like, Hell of yeah. the torch Hell yeah. from one goat to another. Hell Damn, yeah, that's a yeah. beautiful shit, man. But <laughs> what's even more beautiful? This video right here. These are the top 20 plays of Steph right. Curry's career. And this man has done it all. He set unbreakable records, embarrassed NBA legends. I mean, he's Steph Curry. So what are you doing? This what are you doing? All right, yo, that was good. So Jordan, <coughs> at times Michael Jordan humiliated his opponents. That was, uh, I don't know what's up my full screen here. Anyway. Yeah, that was the video. I thought I'd do one of those. I, I do music videos, um, TikToks, funny videos, skateboard videos, and I even have a couple on Jordan and uh, things like that. I just do whatever I feel like reacting to on my YouTube channel. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And if uh, you like my videos, check me out. And uh, yeah, leave some comments. Let me know what you think of this video. Thanks a lot. Peace. Get up, get up, get up.